Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In this session, I shall be explaining you a solution to critical section problem. So one of the most popular solution for the critical section problem is the Peterson solution. To understand the Peterson solution, you should know a solution using the turn variable and another solution using the flag variable. So then I can explain you the popular solution called as the Peterson solution. So to begin with, let me start with a solution using the turn variable. Turn here is just a variable name. You can use any other name, but popularly since we are using the variable name as turn in Peterson, we will try to use here also the word turn. Moreover, any variable name is okay. It's not that you should always make use of the word turn. In uh, the textbook uh, Tenenbaum, he has used the variable interested. Galvin has used the variable turn. So it uh, actually the logic matters here. The variable name doesn't matter. So you can make use of any other variable name also. So we'll make use of the variable name called as turn here. So this turn is an integer variable and initially the turn variable will be set to zero, fine. Now moreover, I wanted to tell you this is the pseudocode for process P0 and this is the pseudocode for process P1. See what exactly you're trying to do here is you need to find a solution to solve the critical section problem. What is critical section problem? Mainly if more than one process try to access the critical section of that particular program code, then the output is inconsistent. So we have to care, we have to see that this solution, whatever you are proposing, whatever you are writing should satisfy the three different conditions. The first one is the mutual exclusion. And in the mutual exclusion, what exactly you, you have to look into it is a process P0, if it is there in the critical section, the other process P1 cannot enter or should not enter the critical section. So basically what you can do is uh, you can always uh, look into this code and divide this code into three sections. One is the entry section. The other one is the critical section, which is having the shared variables and resources. And then the exit section and then you have the remainder section. This remainder section is private to those processes. So you don't have to worry, but every process, that means a solution to this kind of problem should basically have entry section, critical section and exit section. Then whether we have these sections in the pseudocode, yes, we have. This while statement is the entry section. And then you have, so this while statement is the entry section. Whereas the critical section is critical section here, then exit section is this one line of code. So here this solution is what consisting of just three lines here. One line is corresponding to the entry section. The other line is corresponding to the critical and the third one is the entry exit section. Basically what we, uh, what we try to mean here is in the entry section, a process takes a permission to enter into the critical section then it you it accesses uh, it accesses the shared variables and resources in the critical at the time of leaving it informs the other processes that it is leaving the critical section so informing the other process that it is entering into the critical section is entry section accessing the resource uh, shared variables and resources is the critical section informing the other processes that it is leaving the critical section is the exit section so this particular code is written in this manner now initially the value for the turn is 0 now process P0 wants to enter into critical section and this solution is, it is a two process solution. In the features, I can write down it is a two process solution. That means it can work if there are only two processes competing to enter into the critical section. The first process we have named it here as P0, the other one we have named it as P1. And in to add to the feature, I can say it is a busy waiting solution. So while the time I'm explaining, I'll also tell you what do you mean by busy waiting. And this is a software mechanism. So this solution is what it is based on the software. So it is a basically you just try to remember some three to four features of this uh, any solution. Now look into the code. While true, this is what until the this particular uh, code whatever is written here will run well, we will run infinite number of times. So that means a process can carry out this as many times as it wants. Now after that once it enters this is what these are the three main lines of code here while turn is not equal to zero what process P0 is trying to do is process P0 wants to enter into the critical section but before it enters it has to check the value for the turn variable whether turn is not equal to zero what is here it is equal to zero if it is equal to zero the condition is false that means now this while loop Normally, we have in this manner, no, in the programming language, whatever you use, right, while condition is true. So, this is what you 
carry out in the while loop. If the condition is true in the loop you are having certain statements then there will be one more statement here okay after the uh, body of the loop. So, if the condition is true this statements will get executed and then this statement after whatever is written after the body of the loop will also get executed if the condition is true. Now, if the condition is false in the while loop okay if the condition is false what will happen if the condition is false this body of the loop will not get executed. So, these statements will be skipped and directly the control will get transferred to the statement that is present what after the body of the loop. So, if the condition is false. So, similarly here we have not written any statements these statements are not there in this while loop that is why you can see here there is a semicolon. So, if there are no statements here if the condition is false the next statement that has to get executed in this case will be what the critical section. So, it is it is entering into the critical section. So, here I will show you just to make you people understand if this is the critical section. So, before entering into the critical section the process P0 has executed this line it has tested the value for turn yes turn is well, it is telling turn not equal to 0 here no turn is equal to 0. So, the condition becomes false and P0 can enter into critical section. Then once it enters into critical section at the time of leaving it will make the value for turn equal to 1 and it will exit okay P0 will come out. Then the remainder section is what completely private to that process code only. But only here you have to see that these three statements are getting performed. So, this will happen normally if even if you start for P1, P1 is checking the value for turn then whenever it sees that if the turn value is equal to 1 okay if the turn value is equal to 1 that means because here it is checking for the while loop while turn not equal to 1. In this case if turn value becomes 1 then this while loop for the P1 becomes what false it can enter into the critical section. So, very peacefully these processes one after the other can enter this can happen this is not our problem okay. We wanted to see that if a process P0 is in the critical section and P1 if it if at all it wants to enter into critical section whether it can enter or not this is what you have to see here. So, to check that what we will do is okay we will start again now initial value for turn we have kept it as 0. So, we will start this while turn not equal to 0 P0 is testing the value for turn while turn not equal to 0 no turn is equal to 0 it will enter into the critical section it will enter into the critical section. Then what will happen at this point? Once this is happening at the time when P0 enters into critical section we do a contact switch here the control is given to process P1. P1 is interested to enter into the critical section. So, P1 will start running its code while turn not equal to 1 but turn value is equal to 0 here. Turn not equal to 1 yes turn is not equal to 1 the condition is what true for the while loop. If the condition is true you have put a semicolon here it will be inside the loop only it will never come out and it will never enter into the critical section. So, this way what we have done is whenever a process is there inside the critical section the other process cannot enter into the critical section. So, that property is called as what mutual exclusion this is the first condition a solution should satisfy yes this solution is satisfying what the mutual exclusion condition. Since I have started with process P0 and I tried making what P1 to enter P1 is not able to enter it is not that you have to start only with P0 you can start with P1 as well start entering uh, yeah start running the code for P1 then do the context switching when P1 is in the uh, critical section then try making P0 to enter into critical section P0 should not enter. So, that way we can say yes mutual exclusion is satisfied ok. One more thing you notice here see suppose if P0 is completely executing the this lines of code it has successfully entered into the critical section and it has come out also but what no but P0 if it wants to enter again whether it is possible or not you need to check here. So, we will start again so we will set the value for turn initially equal to 0 ok we have set the value for turn initially as turn equal to 0 while turn not equal to 0 no turn is equal to 0. So, the condition is false here for this particular line fine. So, it will enter into the critical section P0 will enter into critical section then after accessing the shade variables at the time of leaving it will make the value for turn equal to 1 and it will come out from the critical section. At this point of time P1 has not made an at any attempt to enter into critical section. P0 has come out but P0 wanted to enter it again 
P0 is interested to enter into the critical section again. So, what it will do? It will start executing these lines of code. It will check the first line while turn is not equal to 0. No. Here you can see. Yes, turn is not equal to 0. While turn not equal to 0 is the line of here. What is that? Yes, turn is not equal to 0. It is equal to 1 now in this. So, if it is 1, the condition becomes true here. And what it will happen? It will be inside this loop. It will never enter into the critical section. So, this solution is giving this kind of problem. See, one more thing what you have noticed is though P0 entered into the critical section, P1 is not competing at all. P0 wanted to enter again, but it is not possible for P0 to enter again. So, how long P0 will wait? That is what we have to see here. P0 will be able to enter into critical section again only after P1 enters into critical section. Why? Look here, the value for turn has become 1. If turn has become 1, then if P1 can enter now, yes, P1 can enter because P1 will run this line of code while turn not equal to 1. No, turn is equal to 1. So, the condition is false at this point for P1 and it can enter into critical section. Then after it leaves the critical section, it will set the value for turn equal to 0. So, once this becomes 0, then P0 can enter into critical section because now when it executes this line of code, the condition for the while loop becomes false and it can enter into critical section. So, what you have done is to make P0 enter again, you are making P1 also if even though not interested, you are telling no, you should enter into critical section so that the other process can enter into. So, what is happening here? This process, because this process even though it is not interested, it is entering. So, we say this problem is giving this particular solution is giving to a problem called as strict alternation. Actually, this should not be, this should not happen in any of the solutions proposed for the critical section problem. But this using the turn variable, it is resulting into a problem called as strict alternation. That means what is that you are trying to do is P0, then P1, then on P0, then P1, then once again P0. So, P0, even though if P0 is interested again, it cannot enter again, it will make P1 to enter into critical section, similarly vice versa. That means, if P1 is, if P1 wanted to enter it again, but it cannot unless P0 enters and leave the critical section. So, this problem is called as strict alternation. So, the, even though we have to check with the other problems, uh, uh, like with other conditions like uh, the bounded weight and the progress, but what we have seen here is, there is no what, there is a strict alternation problem happening here. So, that is the reason this particular solution will satisfy only one condition that is the mutual exclusion. That is the mutual exclusion. Now, let us see whether any other solution will satisfy or any other solution will try to remove this problem strict alternation. So, that we will be seeing in our future sessions. However, I would like to request my audience if you find this session useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.